Hi guys, it's Misha and welcome back to my channel. So I have a question for you. Have you ever met a pregnant person? Before, if you said yes, I would guess that chances are that person was a woman. But the left says otherwise. They say that that might have been a man. Or are they them? So today we're going to learn about all the great inclusive language, such as chest feeding, birthing persons, menstruating people. Before we get into it, please make sure to hit subscribe and the notification bell so that you don't miss my videos. So recently there has been a rise in the use of inclusive language. And for an example, I can show you AOC discussing uh, women's rights to an abortion, for example. Notice the terminology that she uses. And two weeks late on your period for any person, any person with a menstrual cycle, can any person with a menstrual cycle, okay? Not woman. What this is about is controlling women's bodies. This is about making sure that someone like me as a woman or any menstruating person in this country. Oh, oh, so she said woman, but then she went back to person, okay. Cannot make decisions over their own body. Okay, see, she got mixed up. She was like, yeah, menstruating women, I, I mean, people, menstruating people, anyone that has a menstrual cycle. Also, you can't say pregnant women anymore. You have to say birthing people because what about all the pregnant men, right? It's just the continuous erasure of women, like womanhood in general. We, it's no longer a mother or a pregnant woman. It, you can't breastfeed, you're chest feeding. It's human milk. You thought women existed? That's weird. I can understand how mothers will find this very offensive. I mean, it's insulting. Here's a TikTok I wanted to show you of a very bright young lady telling us about the inclusive language that we should be using. When it comes to inclusive language, oftentimes people tend to use phrases like people with penises or people with vaginas rather than saying male and female or men and women. While this can absolutely be inclusive for trans people, unfortunately it's not always the most inclusive language for intersex people. My advice is to use language that focuses on function and not just form. That means focusing on the actual function that you're talking about, such as people who can get pregnant, people who can get other people pregnant, people who are at risk of testicular cancer, and so on and so forth. This is much more inclusive because there are intersex people who are born with a vagina but don't have a uterus or ovaries or an ability to menstruate. So again, super dehumanizing, reducing people to their bodily functions. And if you think this is just one or two crazy people using this type of terminology, it's not. It's actually taking place in schools as well. Uh, UCLA now has pads and tampons in the men's restroom. I'll insert a photo right here. And yeah, I mean, why would a man need a pad or a tampon? According to them, men can have periods. I personally didn't know that. This is the reason why we have to say menstruating people. The constitutional ability to bring a lawsuit to protect constitutional rights of people of Michigan. So I brought a lawsuit on behalf of all the menstruating people in Michigan, 2.2 million. Menstruating people? We are called women women. <laughs> I mean, is it so offensive to say this word now? I mean, they're really acting like it is. Uh, why not just go back in the Bible, for example, and erase Mother Mary? Let's make a human Mary. You should no longer be the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. How about human parent, human child, and the Holy Spirit? That would be very gender inclusive. Why are we buying into the delusion that men can get periods and can get pregnant? And the actual beauty and difficulties of pregnancy and of being a woman in general, it's all being erased. Where are the feminists? This is something worth fighting for. How are you not bothered by this as a woman? Here's a trans woman, Jessica Yaniv, who is very problematic, um, claiming that he, she, they, whatever, has a period, right? Here's a photo um, and it says, my period started to, yeah, couldn't go into the pool, but it was so much fun. Forgot my tampons in my other bag, FML. What? What are you talking about? I mean, are you actually delusional? These are some transgender parents, um, one of which I guess is a male to female and is trying to breastfeed, or sorry, chest feed their newborn. Oh, I have to put it over here. The baby has been able to latch, but I've not been able to produce any milk. It's okay. I wonder why. Because we're gonna supplement the feeding with formula so that my baby's still getting the, the nutrients that they need, but I'm still feeling hopeful. It's not gonna happen. I mean, these people honestly seem very upset about um, the trans person not being able to chest, breast, whatever, feed the child. Obviously, you're gonna feel upset if you're trying to be someone you're not. 
You as a trans person, right? That's your identity. You're a trans woman in this case. Great, awesome, beautiful, you do you. But you're not a biological woman. You don't have the same capabilities. You're, you're different and that's great and that's wonderful. But why are you pretending to be something you're not? Obviously you're gonna be unhappy. It's like the original painting of the Mona Lisa, right? For example, it's beautiful, it's amazing. And there are many copies of the Mona Lisa, none of which are the actual real Mona Lisa, but they're still beautiful, but they're different. And to pretend that the copies are the real thing, uh, that's delusional. And this is actually sexist. It's seen as like a bad word, like just the word woman. Next thing you know, there won't be any Mother's Day. That'll There'll just be non-specified gendered parent day or whatever. Oh, that's a great way to show your appreciation for your mom, right? Or parental unit. What a great way to appreciate the birthing people of the world. It's just the policing of the language, right? For example, we could take a look at Rain Wilson, who played Dwight Schrute in The Office. Um, he posted a tweet about chess feeding and how it's stupid and dumb and immediately apologized because of all the backlash he got. This is the tweet, by the way. It says, you can no longer say nursing or breastfeeding mother. You have to say chess feeding person, just FYI. He's just stating a fact and pointing out like it's ridiculous. Uh, and then immediately after, yesterday I tweeted a mean crack about breastfeeding versus chest feeding. After speaking with some trans friends and educating myself a bit more, I want to apologize for the tweet. It was adding to misinformation and meanness. I'm sorry. First of all, misinformation? Meanness? Don't you think the actual misinformation is telling people that men can breastfeed? And meanness? So what? It's the truth. I also want to talk about J.K. Rowling for a second. I used to say, oh my gosh, I love Harry Potter, but I hate J.K. Rowling. And one time my family was like, why? And me and my friend who was with me at the time, we were like, because she's transphobic. My family asked me, okay, why? And I couldn't give an answer because I just heard it and I assumed it was true. And now I actually go and look at her tweets and she's just stating facts. How is it transphobic? I'll, I'll show you some of the tweets. It says, dress however you please, call yourself whatever you like, sleep with any consenting adult who'll have you, live your best life in peace and security, but force women out of their jobs for stating that sex is real? Um, yes, I completely agree, and that's what's happening. How is that transphobic? Sex is real. If sex isn't real, there's no same-sex attraction. If sex isn't real, the lived reality of women globally is erased. I know and love trans people, but erasing the concept of sex removes the ability of many to meaningfully discuss their lives. It isn't hate to speak the truth. Exactly. How can you advocate for gay rights if same-sex attraction isn't real because sex isn't real? Or how can you be a feminist and fight for women's rights if women don't exist? That's what the left is doing to themselves. They're erasing gendered language. They're saying it's wrong, it's evil. And then they are simultaneously fighting for women's rights or gay rights. If How? 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 So why do we have to accommodate such a small group of people, like actually transgender individuals who have gender dysphoria, and change our entire language uh, to please them? I mean, how does that make sense? And a lot of these people aren't legitimately transgender. They claim that they're a woman one day, they claim that they're a man the next. There's obviously something going on mentally. You can't just tell me that you're a woman and, I'm, and I have to obey and use the correct gender pronouns. I can think that I'm a cat. Putting on a tail and ears isn't going to make me a cat. And what, I'm supposed to force you to refer to me as a cat or else? And you could say, but Misha, this has nothing to do with uh, women and men and they thems. Really? Because people are identifying as rats? People are identifying as other animals and inanimate objects. That's gonna be the next step. I mean, what do you think? That's the logical next step. And it's important to distinguish men from women. You understand how women work and how men work because they're different. Men bring something to society that women cannot. Women bring something to society that men cannot. It's literally so simple and so basic. It's what keeps our society going. If you take that away, society will literally fall because nothing will matter and everything will be chaotic. Take women's sports, for example. We were letting a trans women compete against women. Are we to ignore the fact that biological men have different muscle mass than biological women? And why do we even have women's sports and men's sports? Next step, sports. People sports. So men and women will have to compete against each other, right? I wonder what will happen in that case. <laughs> there will be no point to competing. Should we stop saying that women can produce eggs and men produce sperm? 
because that's offensive? Should we go into the science books, right, and change that terminology and just write production cells just so that we don't offend anyone? I mean, look at the pronoun nonsense. Now it's entered the Navy, right? The indoctrination continues and has made itself into the Navy because it's very important for the Navy to know when to refer to you as a they, them. Take a look at this video. Take a look at it. At a cookout I was at, we were uh, talking about pronouns and somebody was disagreeing with how different people um, see themselves as different pronouns. How dare they? And the argument was, if you look like a female, then it's she, her, because that's what's normal. And if you make me call you something else, then you're infringing on my rights. And I, I was really taken aback by the comment and I really wasn't sure how to respond. And the only thing I could really think quickly to say was... Her brain shut down. She was traumatized by this comment. It wasn't a safe space. How could there not be a trigger warning? It was, it's not about you at all and it's mostly and ultimately about respect wait a minute wait a minute why is your experience and your desire for me to respect your imaginary pronouns rat rat self why is that more important than my desire to be based in reality and to have simple truths such as men are men women are women why is your opinion more important than mine it's literally, it, all it comes down to is narcissism. These people think that their feelings trump everything else. Facts, other people's feelings even, right? What about conservative people's feelings? They don't matter, right? Only you matter. It only matters when your feelings are hurt, not when mother's feelings are hurt because now they have to be referred to as birthing persons. Then it, it doesn't matter, right? For example, I'm not allowed to be upset that women are being erased. Or I'm even thinking, what about doctor visits? What about the treatment of women in emergencies, for example? Can you imagine how difficult that would be? I mean, soon when the doctor has to have, you know, the sheet filled out with the patient, they're going to have to go through every possible human function, right? When was your last period? Oh, oh, sorry. Do you, do you get a period? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, are you at risk for prostate cancer? I mean, by the time the doctor fills out the medical questionnaire, he's going to be dead. He'll be a skeleton. Someone actually commented this quote, reminded me about it uh, on my Yuri Bezmenov video. And this is a genius quote by Alexander Solzhenitsyn. And it says, human beings are born with different capacities. If they are free, they are not equal. And if they are equal, they are not free. Oh, and first of all, let me tell you that he was a Russian novelist and he was a dissident from the Soviet Union. This quote is about communism and I 100% agree with him, but I also think that this can apply to this, like erasure of women and men, right? That we no longer have any differences between men and women. Because you can deny it all you want, but men and women are different, okay? We have different capacities and we are unique in our own ways. To say that everyone is the same and we have to live in this delusional fantasy that there are no differences between us, then we are not free because our identity is being stripped away from us. And that's exactly what's happening to women today. That's all for today's video, guys. Please let me know in the comments below. What do you think about this gender inclusive language? Also, please remember to hit subscribe and the notification bell so that you don't miss my videos. So follow me on my other social media accounts. I have an Instagram and a TikTok and also Rumble, and they are all linked down below. So don't forget to follow me there. See you in my next video. Bye.